Because God can only speak it once. He said it already. It's up to you now. You deal with your heart. And so, God does all the work. God sat down after his work in creation. He entered the Sabbath rest. And then we also saw that in spite of the mist that happened after, we don't know how long Adam was there enjoying God's presence, Jesus now had to come down again because of the mess, work again, fix everything, and then sit down after our redemption. Uh, I mean, he sat down because he provided our redemption. He did all the work. God's job is to work. Our job is to walk in the benefits of what he has done. Amen. That, my dear friends, takes knowledge. Revelation knowledge. Because how can you walk in the benefits if you don't know what the benefits are? That's why Jesus gave us an all-important key in Matthew 6, 33, when he said, Seek first, not second, first, the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And everything from verse 19 to 32 of Matthew 6 will just be added to you. You don't need to struggle our effort, the effort that we are told to exert is in the seeking. Because all believers should be seekers. We learn the ways of the kingdom, how God does things in the kingdom. No longer the way we were programmed in the world, that's why we have to be reprogrammed because our programming was wrong. And we have to be renewed in our thinking. We have to have the mind of Christ or God and think like Him. But you cannot think like Him and you cannot know His ways unless you think like Him. You cannot do what God does if you don't think like Him. And so study that. Learn the ways of the kingdom. Know what is right in the eyes of God. And do that. Know in your heart that you have right standing with God forever. Amen. And so when you pray, because you know you are in good standing, nothing standing between you and God, because you are in good standing, you know you have confidence that He hears you when you pray. Amen. That's why we say, I am the righteousness of God Amen. in Christ. Amen. I am righteous. And righteous people think right. Amen. Yeah. Not negatively. Not what the devil tells them. Only what God tells them. That's why you are righteous. Because God said you are righteous. Amen. He made you righteous. So, if you believe right, you will live right. And so knowing I cannot live this Christian life successfully in my own strength and ability, I need to have God's ability put on me the empowerment of the Holy Spirit in order for me to live successfully. See, the Holy Spirit in you is for character formation. His job in you as he resides and takes residence in your heart is to shape your character from inside. That's why it's always from the inside out. The reality of what you have inside is what you will see in your circumstances. That's why whatever problem you have in the natural is not a circumstantial problem. It is always a spiritual problem. The root is in the spirit. It has to be corrected in the spirit so you don't see it again and again and again in your situations. The Holy Spirit 
on you, upon you, is for demonstration of power. That's why in the Old Testament, we've seen so many times when, when the Holy Spirit comes on them. I mean, Gideon, David, King Saul, <coughs> when the Holy Spirit comes on them, they do great things. And then, weeks after mission is accomplished. <coughs> and so, how do I now know I have received the power of the Holy Spirit? Do we plead with God or labor for it? Is there anything I need to do? Do I need to go into fastings and self-denials to deserve this empowerment? Let me answer you by asking you another question. How do we know our sins are forgiven. Diyan ang umbisa yan eh. Yan ang ugat dyan. Are you sure your sins are forgiven? Am I talking to anyone? Are you sure yes. your sins are forgiven? Because in our former religion, we were never sure. And so as a believer, we are to be sure. But you have to base your surety in the Word of God. Amen. So Ephesians 1, 6 and 7 says, To the praise of the glory of His grace, by which He made us, He bestowed grace or favor upon us, He made us accepted in the Beloved. In Him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. This is how we know our sins are forgiven. We did nothing to deserve this. We didn't even deserve salvation. He just saved us from the foundation of the world. He knew we were coming into the kingdom of God. Our redemption came through his blood and it is based solely on what he has done. Did you notice that the thief on the cross, did he say, Lord forgive me for my sins? He just said, Lord remember me when you enter. You know? Your kingdom, your part, your. Just remember me. He had no idea where that was. And Jesus said, Today you will be with me in paradise. All he said was, Remember me. The woman caught in adultery. Did she say, Forgive me? And Jesus said, I don't condemn you. Just go and see no more. The woman at the well. Did she say, I'm sorry, I mean, you got me there. I've had five husbands, and the one I'm with is not even my husband. Jesus gave her a commission. The first evangelist in scripture was a woman who had five husbands and was on her sixth. I never read 